Hey there it's me Eden, if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to my channel and visit my Patreon page for early access, link in the description. Maxine obviously saw this danger too, and stood to come between them. Come on, she said placatingly, I'm sure we can sort this out. Let's go and sit down around the table and talk it through. Come on Anita, you as well. The four of them walked up the room to the dining table and sat down at it. The two women joined them, and immediately there began a heated discussion of who had promised what to whom, when and how, full of vitriol and denial. Lucy, or Lawrence, and I were left in the lounge area of the room alone. He still stared pointedly out of the window rather than at me. I decided that since we were both in the same boat, I should make some effort at making friends. Hi, I said, brightly, sitting down next to him. I don't think we've seen each other before. There was no reply, and no movement from Lawrence in response. I was silent for a while, hearing the babble of excited conversation from the six at the other end of the room, sitting around the table like at some sort of diplomatic conference. Eventually, I decided to try again. Are you all right? I asked with genuine concern in my voice. There was silence for a while, but after a good few seconds, without turning his face to me, Lawrence responded. Well what do you think? I was stunned by his anger, which seemed directed as much to me as to Tanya for dressing him up, or fate in general. I don't know. I replied. There was another pause, and then well of course I'm not all right. They've made me wear this stupid wig and this bloody dress when I didn't want to, he spat. My heart filled with sympathy for the poor lad. I remembered exactly how I had felt the day before when I was first put into girls' clothes. Well you could always refuse, I said quietly, wondering if that applied to me as well. He turned to me, his blue eyes ablaze with fury. It's a bit late for that, he said. No, I meant refuse to enter the contest. Then you could just take the dress off and forget about it, I explained. He stared at me hard, as if considering whether I was part of some elaborate plot against him, but after a while, decided to speak again. I did refuse. I told Tanya I wouldn't do it, but then she had to go and mention it to my mom. Your mom? Yes, her over there. I hate her for this, he said, glancing past me to the dinning table. His long blonde hair flipped as he did so. I looked around. So the mystery woman who had introduced herself as Jane Luce was Lawrence's mother. She said it was a wonderful idea, and a great way to get involved in the school and the community, he went on. She's been on about that since we moved here. When was that? I asked. Three weeks ago, he responded, still looking miserable. I wish we'd never done it, especially now. I tried to think what I might say by way of comfort. I knew exactly the misery he must be feeling, sitting next to him in my fluffy pink jumper and denim mini skirt. At least I had the consolation of getting to kiss Anita, there seemed nothing for him at all by way of compensation. And you're just as much to blame, he suddenly said accusingly, and turned away from me to look back out of the window. I was shocked, me to blame? What did he mean by that? I was stung by the accusation, but gathered myself, and responded calmly. I'm not sure what you mean. He was silent for a while. Yes, you do. You enjoy this. I was shocked even more. Enjoy it? You must be joking. You do. Nikki told me you did. I turned and looked at Nikki at the other end of the room, still talking animatedly with her sisters and mother. I don't enjoy it, I said, quietly, offended by the suggestion. Oh, yeah? Well ever since my mother got me into this, I've been told how good you were about it. He turned to face me again, with the anger back in his eyes. Good about it? I queried. Yeah, 
he put on an accent that I assumed was supposed to be Nikki talking. Steve was really good about it. He wasn't afraid to wear girls' knickers like you are. My mouth fell open in surprise, had Nikki really said that about me? He went on with his impersonation. He even insisted on choosing his own, we had to sort him out with six pairs to pick from. I shut my mouth again with indignation. It wasn't quite like that, I said. He looked at me disbelievingly, and after a pause continued. Then there was all this about needing to practice. Because of you, I've got to go to the theater with those lot on Tuesday dressed like this. So I can practice walking in a bloody dress. I didn't know what to say. I could remember my own outrage at the suggestion that I should practice wearing skirts and things. I tried to remember how I had allowed myself to get talked into actually doing it. I had just slipped into the idea, buoyed perhaps by the thought that it meant I got to spend some time with Anita. Well it's not quite so bad once you get used to it, I mumbled ineffectually. Well I don't want to get used to it, he exclaimed loudly, his eyes sparkling with fury. And if you hadn't agreed so willingly to be a girl all this weekend, it would never have happened to me. He turned to stare out of the window again. I was shaken by the portion of blame he was throwing at me. I had never met him before, and somehow even though I had nothing to do with it, he had decided it was my fault Tanya had elected to enter him in the contest, and that his mother had thought it was such a wonderful idea. I should have been angry with him, but two things held me back. Firstly, an empathy with his situation, I, too, was dressed as a girl more or less against my will, not admittedly as femininely as him just at that moment in time, but still very much as a girl. Secondly, and more worryingly, there was a nagging feeling in me that he might just be right. There seemed little doubt that Tanya's sudden desire to enter him in the contest would have been fired up by seeing me the previous day. She had sat and watched as Nikki, her sister, dressed me up in stockings and suspenders, and then put the dress on me. Her mind must have immediately turned to whom she might get to do the same to. And then there were the specifics of his accusations. I had agreed to wear girls' knickers. I remembered my misgivings and the long discussions that had followed, but in the end I had agreed. Nikki had altered the nuances to suggest that it had been my idea that I had demanded a choice of knickers to wear, but the basic facts were true. I shuddered at how it must appear to Lawrence in his current misery. And practicing too, I had now been dressed as a girl for over 24 hours, and would continue that way for at least another six. It must seem crazy that a boy would agree to do that, unless he really enjoyed the concept. What had I been thinking of? I glared up the room at Nikki and Anita, but they were still locked in their conversation. Lawrence speaking again pulled me out of this. I'm sorry, he mumbled. I didn't mean to have a go at you, I'm just a bit upset. He had turned his head to look at the floor, with his blonde hair hanging loose on either side of his head. I couldn't see his face, and was struck by how much like a girl he looked. It's all right, I replied. I've been through it too you know. I don't enjoy this, really. I'm just doing this to please someone. I looked back up the table wistfully at Anita. That girl you came in with? Lawrence asked me quietly. I nodded. You fancy her? I nodded again. It was pointless denying it. And is she pleased about it? He asked, after a pause. I thought about this question. I'm not sure, I said, still looking at the object of my desire. She's been really friendly, but, I don't know, I've been getting mixed messages I suppose. He looked around me, to the dinning table. She's nice, he said eventually. I turned to face him and smiled in thanks. Look, I said. I'm sorry if I got you into this. I got myself into it as well, but I wouldn't wish it on anyone else. It's my own stupid fault for fancying someone too much. He turned his face away. 
It's all right, he said eventually. It's not really your fault. It's my mum's. Anyway, at least neither of us is in it alone now are we? No, I responded, smiling at his worried-looking face. We can face it together. Nikki's mom had stood up and was coming towards us. The others around the table had stopped talking and were looking down the room at us. Right, she said, we've decided what to do. Lawrence and I looked expectantly at her. We've got two lovely young ladies, she began, smiling, and looking from one of us to the other, and two lovely dresses. She paused here, as if this revelation made the situation right of its own existence. So what we'll do is get you both to try them both on, and see which suits who the best. She beamed at the two of us, and the others gathered around. I turned and threw Lawrence a quizzical look. He shrugged, looking to me for a lead. Well okay, I responded for both of us. It was strange, but there seemed to be a new power in numbers. But Lawrence and me get some say in it as well, all right? Of course, Nikki's mum said reassuringly. Excellent. Well you go and get the other dress then Tanya, and we'll see what they look like. Tanya rushed out into the hallway and up the stairs. Shall we get Steve to put it on first, to save messing about with Lawrence? Nikki suggested. Yes, Anita replied enthusiastically. Yes, agreed Maxine. Lawrence looks lovely as he is. Oh, I forgot to say, Nikki said to Anita. We've lost out on the matching underwear set. Maxine had kept them, but she's given them to Tanya for Lucy here. I glanced at Lawrence. It hadn't occurred to me to think what sort of underwear they had made him put on. I winced in sympathy, and then had a sudden panic that soon I'd be put back into something fairly similar. I said it was only fair that if Lucy had the underwear, then Sarah should have the dress, Nikki went on. Don't start that again, said Maxine. We've agreed to this to sort it out. Come on Jane, Nikki's mum said brightly. Shall we let them get on with it and make ourselves a nice cup of tea? Good idea, the other woman responded. And no messing about Lawrence, she said sternly to her son. You put on what they tell you to, otherwise I'll get to hear about it. Lawrence rolled his eyes skywards, but made no reply. You'd best take some stuff off to get ready, Anita suggested to me. I hesitated a bit, more out of habit than anything else. Everyone there except Lawrence had seen me in my underwear before, so I reasoned there was nothing to lose. I leant down and undid the zips on my boots and slipped them off. Tanya came back into the room carrying the huge gray plastic bag from the day before and began to undo it to release the monstrosity within. I unbuttoned my skirt and began to remove the pink sweater as well. Oh, said Nikki as I did so. He's got a different slip on. Yes, said Anita. The other one went into the wash. I preferred the other one, Nikki observed casually. It was a bit more feminine. I managed to get the tight sweater over my head without disturbing my boobs or wig too much. Well, we can save that for the contest itself. Anita said in response to Nikki. Oh, I nearly forgot. Nikki suddenly declared. He'll have to have the stockings and suspenders as well, won't he? Otherwise, it won't be fair. She went out the door and up the stairs. I silently cursed. I had rather hoped they might forget the apparent necessity for stockings to accompany the dress. You'd best take your tights off then, Anita observed for me, smiling. I felt uncomfortable with the way the other three just stood there, watching me undress. It was almost worse than the giggling hysteria that had accompanied all my efforts the day before. It's rude to stare. I announced, and they shuffled uneasily. Maxine walked back into the dinning area and sat down. Tanya glared at me for a while, and then joined her. 
Anita grinned at me in approval, although I didn't know why for a moment. Spoken like a true girl, she declared, smiling at me. You're really getting into this now, it's good. Feeling decidedly less assertive after this comment, I carefully removed my tights and top pair of knickers, ensuring that they didn't disturb the pink pair I had on underneath. I had nearly finished when Nikki came back in, clutching the sheer stockings and pink suspender belt from the day before. Oh pink knickers today, she declared, looking at my nearly naked form. That's good, it won't quite be a match for the suspender belt, but it's near enough. She handed me the items, and I reluctantly took them off her. Sarah's a bit shy with us all gawping at her, Anita announced gleefully, you'd best go up the other end and wait. Nikki looked at her a little confused, and then saw Tanya and Maxine sitting quietly at the dining table. She shrugged, and then went to join them. I stepped into the suspender belt, and pulled it up to my waist, making sure that the suspenders themselves were more or less in the right place. You're really good at this, Lawrence observed in some wonder. I didn't have a clue how a suspender belt went on. Neither did I until yesterday, I said. I slipped the suspenders through my knickers and sat down next to Lawrence on the sofa to put the stockings on. Remembering the constant nagging about potential laddering, I carefully rolled them down to the feet, and then slipped my own feet into them, pulling them up to my knees. Look and learn Lucy. Anita said at this point. Sarah's only done this once before, and now she's more or less an expert. I threw her a withering look, and stood to pull the stockings further up and fasten them. It took a little longer than I anticipated, but I managed to fix all four after a fashion. Very good, Anita observed. She turned to the other end of the room. He's ready for the dress now, she shouted. Come on whoever's putting it on for him. Please subscribe my channel for the next part. And visit my Patreon page for early access.